Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the opportunities I've had as a past governor is to take a look and actually work with a lot of the leadership that Rotary International has itself. Rotary International is run by a board of directors. There are 17 members of this board of directors, along with the president and the president-elect. These people work in conjunction with how Rotary actually operates and works throughout the world. It's an international board of directorship. They come from all over the world, representing 535 different districts around the world, so it's huge. Uh, Rotary, by the way, is 1.2 million members. I had an opportunity recently to catch up to Vice President John Matthews. Uh, John is from Seattle area. He is serving a two-year term, just completing his two-year term, but he was selected by the international president to serve as the vice president. That was, by the way, Barry Rassen. I wanted to also point out the tie. One of the interesting things, each year, Rotary International president puts out a theme, a name along with, or a, a slogan, along with the logo, and um, part of the slogan or logo comes with a tie. So each year, the international president selects out a tie that comes out and is used throughout the year. So if you see this tie more, than, more often than not in some of the shows that I do, and also on the, on the footage that we have in the video, that's the reason why. This is the international theme tie. Of proceeds from these tie sales actually goes to the Rotary Foundation. The um, area that I actually caught up to uh, Vice President John at was in San Diego. San Diego each year uh, in January, third week of January, the president, I'm sorry, the governors from throughout the world, uh, international incoming governors for the following year, actually come in and have to be trained for one full week in San Diego. Uh, this is called the International Assembly. I plan to have a show on this shortly. But at that uh, area, they have the governor-elects actually go through pretty extensive training. They are there literally for the entire duration. They are um, actually logged, checked in for each of the sessions, including the general sessions where they sit, and there's thousands of people sitting in this auditorium, they have assigned seats. And the reason that they have these assigned seats is that the sergeant of arms literally goes through and marks off and takes attendance for them for each and every session that they do. The breakout sessions, exactly the same. When they walk in the door for that one and a half hour session, they are checked off at the door, um, checked in, and they are checked out as they leave. And the reason for this is because of the cost. The International Assembly itself is probably one of the largest uh, expense items that the, in the budget that Rotary has. Uh, I believe and I anticipate or estimate the amount to be close to $10 million for them to bring all of these governors in to house them, uh, fly them in, house them, send them back, feed them, and train them that entire time. The training is done by the Rotary International staff themselves. The president-elect will select a number of people that will work with him, and the directors will then select in who they will have to work in these facilitated exercises where you're broken down to 20 to 25 uh, incoming governors speaking specific languages. Of course, we have uh, identified 11 different languages in Rotary. There's nine that they usually use. And so because of that, they are broken down into those specific groups and areas. The um, interesting part, too, um, that I want to share with you is that I've had the opportunity to work with um, John Matthews over the years, even before he was selected to be a director. Uh, actually, even before he was uh, in a governor line, we met a few times. He was by far one of the excellent choices that, the, that Rotary has put in place for a vice president. He's uh, very knowledgeable. He's got a personality that uh, lends well to itself uh, in that he can work with people very comfortably, and people are comfortable with him. But I think the biggest part of it, as you'll see in this interview, is the fact that he has a pa passion, a passion to serve. Passion not only to serve Rotary, but passion to serve people in general. Uh, he has a strong heart for humanitarian efforts, but most importantly, he's doing it for the right reason. And there's very few leaders that I've seen in Rotary, unfortunately, that do it for the right reason, but he is an exemplary person for that. And with that, let's jump into the interview that we had. Um, I met with him. We snuck into the president's office, by the way, and I'll give you a little bit of uh, information on that as we finish out. But let's cut to the video. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, John, uh, welcome and thanks for joining us at the show. We are in San Diego, by the way, at the International Assembly. We are training uh, incoming district governors. I had the opportunity to catch up to John here and I wanted to ask him some questions. John Matthews is the Vice President of Rotary International for this year and doing an outstanding job. 
Welcome, John. Thanks, Wade. It's a delight to be here, be with you. Great, great. Thank you. Now, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background. Ah, well, I uh, grew up in uh, Rochester, New York, okay. uh, on a farm, uh, and uh, went to school uh, back east at Penn State. And when I got out of school, I joined the Navy. And I had no intention of staying in. I was going to do my commitment and then move on to other things. But I loved what I was doing, and I loved the people that I was working with. So I ended up staying 20 years. <laughs> and we got out uh, of the service because uh, I was moving so many times. Okay. And uh, so I, went, I retired, uh, actually it was here in San Diego, and okay. went to work for the Price Company, and thinking all my moves were over. Three years later, we merged <laughs> with Costco, and we moved once more. <laughs> On the day we had the curtains installed in our living room, <laughs> we got the news that we were moving to Seattle. Wow. And so, uh, but it's been a fun ride. Sounds good. And then uh, they moved to Seattle, put you in Costco. What, what are you doing there then, or what were you doing at that time? Uh, at, I, uh, down at the Price Company, and then later after uh, the merger, I was uh, senior vice president uh, overseeing human resources and risk management. Okay. So. It encompassed uh, employee benefits, labor relations, uh, all the uh, employee development aspects, uh, uh, employee communication, plus uh, the retirement plans. Wow. On the risk management side, it was workers' compensation, okay. general liability, uh, safety, loss control, things like that. I retired uh, in, the, in about three years ago. Three years uh, ago, wow. Wow, good. So your business, I would say, was actually working with people. You had a business of working with people. That's it. Wow, that's great. And how about Rotary? How did you get involved with Rotary? Well, I, my dad was a Rotarian and uh, had been in for years. And so that conversation was always at the dinner table and I was familiar with it. But while I was in the Navy, it was very difficult to try to find it in a Rotary club where um, I could be there and participate. Uh, and still take on uh, workups of ships and deployments and everything that goes with Navy life. <laughs> so uh, uh, I waited and, and uh, I retired. My last tour uh, in the Navy was here uh, in San Diego. And just as I knew I was going to retire, uh, I joined the Coronado Rotary Club mm -hmm. uh, okay. just uh, across the bay from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, was, that was 1988 and I was here. Uh, in Coronado at that club for about seven years and then we moved to Seattle and I've been in Seattle ever since. Wow, so two large clubs then, both two, clubs, good yeah. size. Seattle's, a, yeah, uh, our uh, uh, Coronado's about 250 and uh, Mercer Island's about 150. Okay, tell us a little bit about Rotary and we often kind of want to hear about that Rotary moment. What really hooked you on the organization? Now the interesting question, I had, uh, for years I was, you know, I, I was I had my head down, and I was just going to. I'd come to Rotary meetings on Wednesday noon here, and then I'd race off to work. And I just kept my eye on just trying to do work and uh, be as productive as I could on on one side. But I didn't feel like I was doing very much with Rotary, other than just showing up. And uh, we had moved to Seattle, and I had gone to a district assembly, and Mary Ellen and I were listening, and. This gentleman gets on the stage and he talks about making a trip to Ethiopia to help immunize kids for polio. And Mary Ellen and I looked at each other and said, hey, that sounds like fun. Let's, <laughs> let's go. So we joined about 65 other Rotarians from the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all went to, uh, to Ethiopia. And our lives have never been the same since. Wow. That's outstanding. Yeah. Now, was that um, with the group of Ezra? Did Ezra run that? That's or? Ezra Trishomi, yeah. and uh, there were um, a, a number of us. Actually, we all have our vests, and when we come to conferences and we see each other, it's like this family, extended family of people who've had a shared experience. Got it. Great, great. Well, um, next question would be, as a director, Rotary International Director, what made you decide to go in that direction as well, a director? I, I never thought I wanted to be a director, but you know, what seems to happen in Rotary is we encourage each other. And so 
just as you served as a past as a governor, mm -hmm. uh, there were probably people behind that decision that said, "Wait, you'd be great at this. <laughs> you should put your name in to go be a district governor." Right. And you know, we listen to that. It plants a seed, and then we think about it. And before you know it, it, it says, "Okay, that makes sense." And I think that happened to me too. Uh, both as a governor, and I wasn't sure I really wanted to be a director, but um, as I thought about it, I thought, you know, I've got skills and I can help Rotary become a little bit stronger, a little bit better, and maybe this is the way I can do that. And so I decided then to uh, put my name forward to uh, serve as director. Great, great. Yeah. And by the way, at the zone level, just so you know, and I don't know if you for sure if anybody has told you, but you came with quite a bit of support. You uh, shined quite a bit as a governor, as a past governor, and then when we heard about that, we were definitely endorsing you 100%. Thank Knowing you. That it was the person that we were looking at, somebody that really cared about the organization, made a big difference there. Now from being director, now you're thrown into the vice presidency. <laughs> so how did that work out? It's, I, got, I have to tell you, first I'm gonna back up a step to director because um, personally, I, I think this is the best job in Rotary. Yeah. Um, you know, no holds barred. This is, um, uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. You get to work with some amazing people, both at the staff of Rotary International and uh, other directors, and then you get to meet their leadership teams from around the world, and that's fun. Mm -hmm. And so I've enjoyed that. It's a, you know, clearly it's an honor uh, and a privilege to have this uh, position. Uh, but uh, it has also been a treat uh, to do it. It's very special. Uh, the vice president job is uh, icing on the cake. Um, and perhaps many people don't understand this, but what happens is as a director you, you have a two-year commitment. And in the second year, the uh, president-elect selects different people to do different jobs. And Barry asked me to be his vice president. And quite honestly, I was prepared to say I'd be honored at whatever job he asked me to do. This just turned out uh, to work out nicely. Uh, but as a vice president in Rotary, uh, you're really plan B. Uh, if anything happens to the president um, and, you know, we're praying that for his good health uh, all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, if, uh, you know, uh, heaven forbid anything should happen to a sitting president, then the vice president would step forward uh, for that to fill in. In the, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, he and I work together to try and uh, plan and organize uh, board meetings and the topics and the discussions and where we want the discussion uh, to go with the board. Uh, and there are assignments that I pick up. Uh, like just uh, this morning, I was uh, working one collateral duty, uh, which was to help on the orientation of uh, Rotary International Directors Elect. So these are people that are stepping in uh, to the job, and uh, so I get to lead the orientation with that, and, and that's a fun job too. That would be a good one. And by the way, uh, having Barry as your president, that's uh, another icing on the cake there. Great that has, man. That has been a joy. Yeah, 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 he's a very good man to work with. So tell me a little bit about, for the audience, a lot of them wonder, like, what is your idea of the organization? And when I say that, oftentimes people see the president as being at the top. And from there, they delegate down the responsibilities all the way to the club level, to the membership level. What's your take on that? Well, I think in uh, uh, a, a strong organization uh, does it a little bit differently. It, traditionally, if you looked at an organization chart of any company in our country, and I'm sure in a lot of countries around the world, uh, you see this triangle with the president at the top and then the vice presidents and then the, uh, the managers and then down here the employees and then uh, out here is the customer base. Right. And when I look at Rotary, uh, I see that customer base is on top. Mm -hmm. I see our Rotarians as being uh, a, an extraordinary group of, of people who are trying to do good in the world and the people supporting them are the leaders within the club, the committee chairs, uh, 
uh, and the organization that, that will give them the tools that they need to be successful day to day. And then supporting them would be the board of directors within the club, and supporting that at the bottom is the, is the club president. And in fact, you've got an inverted triangle uh, there Very with good. the president and the leadership team doing everything they possibly can to give the tools and energy and encouragement to the, the team in that club. And the benefits of that, that new organization, the way it should be, what do you say on that one? What? Well, I think once you've, uh, uh, it, it changes the role of the president completely. Because instead of feeling like you're on top of the world and, and, and trying to provide direction to it, you're really putting um, yeah, the, uh, your, your shoulder to the wheel and saying, what can I do to help you be successful? Right. And the, the subtle difference in that is in the traditional triangle, it's all about the CEO. And in the inverted triangle, it's not about the club president at all. It's all about the customer. Mm -hmm. And if we can keep our focus back up on the customer, we'll have our eyes set on the right goal. Good, yeah, very good and very true. How do you see, say at the club level, how that could be achieved? How do we change some of these clubs to where it is the reverse triangle? Well, it's a, it's, it starts with the, with the leadership and they have to accept the idea that um, this whole job and the privilege of serving as club president is not about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may be an overused phrase, uh, but to uh, find out that you know, you're in the middle of a uh, working on a project with someone, and you want to uh, have them do it with the right spirit. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we've been doing in governor training for governor's nominee and governor's elect is uh, probably 10 years ago we started changing the conversation so that that they began to understand that as Rotary leaders, it wasn't really about them. Mm -hmm. It was about what they could do for their team and how they could support their team more effectively. So I think starting with that attitude uh, and understanding that it's really not about you. Right. And then how about um, from the training, I guess, from the presidents comes the governor line. And then from the governor line comes the directors or the president itself. Mm -hmm. So then that also has to be a carry down system. It sure does. Yeah, they, uh, uh, we've, we've got to have not only continuity from one year to the next, but we've got to have a consistent message uh, all the way through the organization. And that's why it's fun working with Barry this year, because that message, you know, on through the board, on through uh, the various coordinators around, around the world, um, and on out to the clubs, has been a very consistent message right, of right. support. Good, very good. And um, the staff, when I say staff, Rhode International staff, they would then endorse this model and see that as the way it should be in the future, or the I, way it should be. I think most people into. that uh, actually stop for a moment and think about it, recognize the value in, in that type of a structure. Yeah. Well, you coming from the people business, you know, probably have the most to say about that because of the fact you understand it, have the most experience in that area too. Well, it's, um, that's one of the fun things about uh, being able to take some corporate experience like Costco and bring that into an organization like Rotary, we're both built exactly the same. Uh, the, you know, the warehouses in uh, in Costco are relatively autonomous from the headquarters, mm -hmm. and that's not a whole lot different than Rotary clubs that are very autonomous from uh, the district uh, structure. So uh, we have a lot of parallels there, and so for me to be able to see that and and draw on those parallels. And, and perhaps take ideas from uh, one organization over to the other, I think that's a, um, uh, it, it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, very true, very true. Now tell us um, what your vision is of the organization as we go forward. What changes do you see that are gonna be substantial or need to be made? Well, if, it would be sad if we just kept doing business as usual for the next 100 years. We've got 114 years right now behind us, and we've done some things very, very well. But in those 114 years, we have added structure and process to the organization that now makes us sort of heavy. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to look at that. I think we need to tip that upside down again, too. 
Um, let me give you an example. We've got within Rotary a, a thought process that if we're going to convey information, Barry tells the staff, the staff puts a message together, we put that out to the district governor, the district governor shares with the coordinators and with their club presidents, and that message eventually filters down. And we're hoping that at some point that it'll get to the club president, and club president will turn tell club members what that message was. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of middle people. <laughs> a lot. And I, I was talking to a Rotarian from Africa uh, a few months ago, and he was saying that between himself and the president, there were 14 layers. Hmm. This is insane. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I understand why from governmental reasons and uh, just for policy, there's, it's necessary to build in some layers. And I'm not saying that we need to strip everything out. In Costco, Jim Sinegal used to say that the best service was self-service. Hmm. That is, if we can take an item and mark it right, price it right, package it right, position it right, that the member walks in and sees that item, they don't need anybody to help them understand that that's a good item to buy or not. Right and they take care of it and off they go. Well, for Costco, that model works and they keep all that labor out of the equation and they're able to keep costs down because they don't have a whole lot of people standing around the floor helping explain what products do and don't do. And so the discipline is that our buyers and our operators had to mark and, and position the right merchandise at the right place at the right time. Take that thought and put it into Rotary. If the best service is self-service, that means that you and I as Rotarians ought to be able to pick up the phone at any point in time or Google or you know uh, email somebody at, at Evanston and get whatever answer we want. Mm -hmm. We don't need to have this come through all the layers, eventually show up at a Rotary meeting and have our, our president explain it to us. I ought to be able to reach right into the organization and get that answer when I want it. Yeah. So I, I see okay. us taking a hard look at what we want to be in the next hundred years. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now how does that play into the foundation and what the foundation does as well, part of that model? The foundation, is, as you well know, <laughs> is uh, in many ways the lifeblood of what we do in Rotary. That's uh, we, you know, on the Rotary side, we have programs and we have uh, Rotarians tied into uh, uh, those programs. But we, those Rotarians are now doing grants and, and work, and the foundation then lends the support to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. It's not everything, but it's a significant part of what we do. And we look at, at more as a partnership between uh, the Rotary Foundation, and we try to operate that way with the Board of Trustees. Uh, for the Rotary Foundation and the Board of Directors for Rotary International. And if we put these two together, working together, uh, sharing common goals, sharing common vision of where we're going as the organization, that sets a tone for the whole organization to then operate uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a like manner. So, uh, you know, I see our foundation is uh, uh, continuing to grow and support uh, the uh, the efforts of Rotarians all around the world. True. Yeah, true. And making a huge difference. Yeah. Especially with the network that we've had and built. Now, the other question I would have, and this is a challenging question, membership. How do we address membership? In your opinion. Well, uh, I, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about membership in Rotary. And maybe too much time. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking back to my 25 years in Costco mm -hmm. and I don't think we talked about membership at all. It was really how do you how do you serve the member? How do you take care of the member? And if you do all those things that you need to do to support the member, the renewal happens automatically. In Rotary, we talk a lot about membership and yet it hasn't helped us as much as we would have wanted. It's growing, Rotary's growing significantly in Asia mm -hmm. uh, and in other parts of the world, but in North America, not so much. And so we see a steady decline in, uh, in membership. What these governors-elect are hearing this week is something that started at our last board meeting where the conversation shifted away from membership for the first time 
to a phrase called grow, growing rotary. And Mark is using that now it, with, uh, with the governor's elect and it encapsulates so much more than just membership. Because growing Rotary could touch the foundation. Mm -hmm. It could touch giving. It can touch membership. It could touch the, the service projects that we do. Right. Every aspect of how do you grow Rotary and increase Rotary's influence in the communities in which we operate. So I see this changing the conversation. And I think once you take that pressure off, uh, I've got to grow membership and instead have governors and their teams work on how do I grow Rotary? That's a whole different answer. It is. And it comes up to something that is, uh, I think, will will move in different directions. Your district may grow Rotary by taking on a different project. My district may grow Rotary by changing how we deliver brand in the Seattle area. So I, I, I think there's a lot of ways for people to participate in that thought process and I, and I see that as leading to better outcomes down the road. One of those outcomes being more and more people seeing Rotary and a brand that they want to be a part of. Got it, well very good. Well, that kind of concludes our time, by the way, John. So thank you, I appreciate very much the message you Well, have. you're very welcome, and glad to be again, here. Again, thank you very much for all the hard work. Actually, there is one more thing. Your time commitment, how, how has that changed as far as what you envisioned the position would do versus now when you're actually serving in that role? I, uh, I don't think too much about time <laughs> commitment per se. I mean, I, I, I'm one of those people that I kind of work my phone sure. the whole time and if there's right. an email there, you get it. But I had made a comment to someone uh, a couple of days ago. I'm putting more hours in now than I did when I was working at full time at Costco. So it's um, yeah, it's it, it it is a lot of uh, time involved, but it's it's good time and time well spent. That's good. Well, I know Barry said he was. Uh 320 days on the road this year, so <laughs> that's the plan. It, it's tough, yeah, it my, is, my tough. roses are feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you very much for your time on that one and your commitment to Rotary. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, thank you. Thanks right. for putting your time together. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, like I said, and I think uh, it was a ex good example that John Matthews truly is a uh, Rotarian's Rotarian. I wanted to share one quick story with you, and that was the closeout part. Um, during the shot, we had a little bit of disruption at that, uh, in the meeting area. What we used was the president's office, the international president's office that was located on the third floor in San Diego, a uh, temporary one. And we had somebody walk in, tried to get in there. It was um, the aide to the president <laughs> that was trying to get through. The um, person that I had working the door actually um, stopped them had them turn around and go out. Well, um, what we found out later on is that um, it was a fairly important meeting, but because of the fact that John Matthews was the vice president, we were able to keep that room. So uh, I did want to share that with you. There is a little bit of hierarchy in Rotary. And with that, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we will talk to you next time. So with that, thank you very much for joining us.